uh, let me bring up the agenda. It's, it's just budget really at this point, isn't it? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Eric. So start with public speak. You need to call that's on the agenda. Yeah. Call okay. the meeting to order. Start with public speak. All right. Uh, does anyone wish to speak? Do you want to do you want to go through them? Diane Charquette? I'm good. Joan, Joan Hebert. All set. Victoria. I'm good. And everybody else is on the board or open. So, all right, moving on. Eric, we're, what do we have left to clear up on budget to make decisions on before we, you know, can move this on to the board of finance? Is there anything we got hanging? I know we have um, the situation with the admin assistant, um, what we want to do there, um, whether or not we are looking at the public works person. Um, and is there anything else besides those? So that plus what you want to do with the town, do you, are you willing to budget for a town planner? That's the third one. And then okay. the last thing is you guys officially have to motion for the employee. One of the things you are as a board are obligated to do is determine employee compensation. So you as a group need to uh, formally motion, you know, either by individual or overall, what pay increases or not um, you're giving employees. Okay. And that covers only employees that are not under contract and not under, uh, uh, not elected. So, okay. and we're Sherry, we're working off the last document you sent us, which was yeah. the last update document, which is what February 3rd. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. That's, that's, that's yeah, that's I have, they have no changes whatsoever. So from okay. that document. Okay. And in that document, um, I was told that one of the meetings to figure in a 3% increase, right. which I did put in there. Um, and then you have your public works positions in there and you have your library people um, bumped up to the minimum wage hourly rate. And we have transfer station people increased their salaries as well. And then a temporary uh, summer helper is also in there. Okay. So those are the things that I put in because you were telling me this is what you want to have okay. in there. Just so you see what it looks like. Okay. Um, the Andover Elementary School number, is that correct in there? Or not. No, it is not. Um, yeah. I can't put a figure in until the Board of Education votes on that budget. Because I think we're what about a hundred thousand over that number, right? Um, ballpark. Ballpark, yeah. Okay. But I can't, you know, understand. Well, we, I can't... We, we generally try to put something in as a as a perspective because this is this is a working document, so everything's changeable. You know? Right. And we're not we're not saying that's what it is. We're saying it's a projection of what it may be. Right. Um, if you can, if you can adjust that up a hundred thousand on your your working document, so at least we're in the same ballpark. All right. And then I thought we I thought we had actually increased more than three percent because we had talked about wage inflation and that we were. I, I put it at 3%. Um, the only one is, is um, public works director. He's at 5% within the budget. Is that contractual or? It is not contractual. I mean, we're going to have to renegotiate. His contract is basically up with the budget year. Um, but since he didn't get any salary increase last year, uh, he requested a total of 5%. So I put that in the budget, but you know, but that when, is your, when did your he number come in last year. When did he come in last year? Uh, about halfway through the year. 
Yeah. So he'll come up halfway through this year on a two-year contract. Is that what we're talking? Well, I think we we set the contract to expire with the budget year. So in future cycles, you know, it would be aligned with the budget year is basically what we did. So we'll have a contract every year with him? Well, probably. Well, I would assume we'd run minimum two-year contracts with him. Um, you know, we can do longer or shorter. Depends what you want to do. Okay. <clears throat> um, well, let's start with that. Do we want to leave J's at 5%? Um, I'm inclined to say if we're doing 3% for everybody else, I don't mind making an adjustment for, but we, we had a small adjustment last year. What was the adjustment last year? Do you remember? For employees? Yeah. Generally 3% last year. But remember last year, much of that 3% was taken up by the fact that we decreased, we increased the employee's contribution to, uh, what do you call it, to uh, their health care, and we decreased the town's, uh, what the town put into their uh, uh yeah, but we're, we still, I mean, to be candid, we still don't have them aligned with what some of the other unions are paying. So they're still in pretty favorable. I mean, we've also, we've, we fully funded that HSA deductible. So. No, we that. don't. Yes, we did. You're saying uh, we didn't, we didn't give them, we didn't give them the full, the full amount in the contracts. The HSA deductible? No. Yeah. No, we fund half of the HSA deductible. When we started, we funded the whole thing, though, the first year, right? Yes, probably. And then we slowly yes. worked our whether we slowly worked our way away from that. So correct. But what we I'm were, saying is that you know you gave employees last year a three percent raise, but then you increased their cost in healthcare contributions, and you wiped out basically half of that increase. Yeah, but they're not paying any more for insurance. We're covering it. We pay for their insurance if they're single, right? And we, we don't pay for all of it. I mean, they contribute to it. And how much are they contributing? Uh, off the top of my head, I think it's 11% right now. Right. It, yeah. And, and it's, it's minimal to what the average person is. I, I, I understand that it's a frustration for people, but you know, that, that's a, I would love to be only paying 11% of my insurance. Let's just say that. Right. And look, it, and I'm not making that argument. It's just that you asked me what last year's raise was. And I told you what it was, but I said at the same time, realize that that didn't equate to 3% you know, more pay for employees because we, we at the same time decreased the amount we added into their, okay. uh, you know, their HSA and we decreased or we increased their contribution to that. I, I, I guess my only point was that's pretty normal in, in, in the real world that happens. I mean, you know, I don't get an adjustment. My wife doesn't get an adjustment based on how much they're making me pay into my insurance, you know? So I wish that was taken into account, but it's not, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm not making that argument either way. You asked me for a set of information, I gave it to you. So you can do with Paula, it what you want. Paula, Jeff, are we okay with the 3% that we're at? Well, to be honest, um, yeah, we've got, I, I, um, I know where I work and uh, I've talked to a few people at other companies and this year the average seems to be right around 3%. I think I think it's fair. Gen okay. Generally, it's three percent right now. What do you Is guys have any any feeling on what you want to do with Jay? So you're you're saying you were asking the question three percent for everybody else, not yeah. Not Jay is currently in the budget at five. He's asking for something for last year because he didn't get a raise because he came in halfway through. So 
so yeah. I'm, inclined, I'm inclined to say he came in halfway through so why would he get a raise that year i yeah i'm kind of leaning towards that but did he he's just asking for something he didn't he didn't put a number out there he you said five percent eric because that was his ask or was that your accommodation no that was his ask I'm just trying to get a feel for how much, how much um, you know, the towns are paying our size for the same service. If he's under or over, Eric, you got any feel for that? So he's he's certainly nowhere near the high end, but he's not. There's there's a really wide range for how much small towns pay their you know public works supervisor. And I think it depends a lot on what responsibilities, you know, to some extent are placed on on that person. Um, you know, the the range for his position is somewhere between 70,000 in a high of, say, 115. I mean, if you somebody that was technically a public works director is probably going to make somewhere between 105 and, say, 125. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll make. But, the, I'll just make the motion that with that I, I don't think given that he just came in that he should have gotten something last year. He should certainly get something this year because we're coming into contractuals. And we're coming into the yearly issuance. I would say I would just do three percent across the board. And that would be my motion: three percent across the board, including Jay. For anybody that's not contractual now are you and you want to make that motion now because i'll be perfectly honest with you last week three board members elected not to make any motions because the two of you were not there so jeff's not but is jeff not going to be on today no, no maybe let's let's wait for scott let's at least wait for scott to come on all right and um i i understand what you're saying scott um eric but I feel like we need to move. I mean, what's the, and just to be candid, if we're not going to make any motions tonight, what's the point of having the meeting? All right. Well, let's let's wait for Scott. What I'm trying to say is, I think we move, we keep going. No, no. Let's back up. Are we? If Scott joins the meeting, are we doing motions? Because if we're not, then let's yes. just fill the meeting now, and we'll call it. I night. I think we make motions tonight with Scott on because we're we're time's ticking. We got to get this. That's how I feel. Jeff, how do you feel? Um, I'm not opposed to making some motions tonight. I mean, with Jay's position, I don't know if it's worth it to do. I mean, I'm not opposed to the 5%, but if we just do like a 2% 2, 2 holdback based on deliverables, you know, let's just say we get our road work done, we get everything done at this summer. Um, yeah, the, you know. the problem with that, though, with this, I mean, I mean, last night is a perfect example. Things get dumped on public works that he has no control over. Oh, I get that. I get that. But what I'm saying is if we don't have a year like we had last year with the rain, and I understand that. But uh, we're, we're never going to have a year that doesn't have something. I get it. I get veterans it. Veterans or well, we're, we just keep falling behind. I just don't know how we're going to catch up. That's all. No, I don't oh. either. But I, I think you, when you join a company and, you, you know, if, to say I should have gotten a raise in the first six months, I, you know, I'm not I'm not there. You know, I'll split the difference with you and say 4%. I mean, to be, to be honest with you, with the stuff that we have to get done this year, I, I don't want to lose a public works supervisor over 1% or 2%. I, mean, I But if we start, I just don't want to feel that that's, we're setting a standard. That everybody comes in and gets a raise in the first, you know, we're going to make up for the six months they, you know, when they first joined. Personally. And he is not on the he's not on the low end, certainly, and we're one of the smaller towns in the state. So and we also provide, you know, we're providing a vehicle, we're providing fuel. So we're not leaving him hanging, I don't think. Eric, are, do you have any issue with the if when Scott gets on with us making motions, or was Jeff expecting us to wait? 
I don't know that there was any expectation. I didn't realize he was not going to be on the meeting. It's not for me to decide. You are the board. You know, you make your own decisions as to what you think is appropriate. Okay. Well, I think we make the motions and do it. And if uh, if we have a meeting next week and he box, we can we can adjust as necessary, I guess. All right, we can ask Scott on the on public works. Um, what else do you have? What else we have, Eric, the admin assistant? Correct. Um, and we also have to talk about adding the public um, possibility of adding the public works person, right? Yep. Yep, make a decision whether you want to add a full-time person or whether you want to add a summer only or whether you want to add both. Well, we definitely need we definitely need a summer person. I, I personally would like to see the other person come on board. I mean, I understand McGuire was a little frustrated yesterday because we talked about, well, we add a person that doesn't mean what we can do that level, you know, that level of a culvert. But I mean, I, I think Eric, if we add another person, we can at least know that we can get most of our basin work done and our other road drainage done, hopefully, as the roads are coming up to being resurfaced. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the more crew you have, the more bodies you have to throw at problems. I mean, the, the problem is, is that in a year, we struggle to get through all the baseline stuff that we're supposed to be doing, you right. know, and so we, we try to leave ourselves you know, a five to six week block to work on a major project, you know, right. and pick one road and say, okay, this year we'll address this drainage on this road. Right. You know, but even that, I mean, there's, you know, there's probably 15 roads that need systematic drainage work. Right. So, and, I mean, and, we and have a 10 point, year. And my point was, if we haven't, if we can get Jay to start managing you know, those crews so that we have one set of guys that's just doing drainage work and the other set is maybe running around and being a little more flexible. I think that hopefully would help us move along, you know. Um, is it helpful to see what the difference is in numbers with the part-time part person versus the full-time person? Would that well, we, need, we need both because otherwise we're not if we if we just may add another full time person, then we're just going to end up pulling them to do mowing, you know. And the part time person is going to be much less expensive. We're not providing benefits. We're not providing, you know. Sherry, what what do we calculate the part timer at? Um, it's fifteen. And if you have the full time or two, that'd be helpful. That should be 0301 in the spreadsheet. Uh, da, 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 da. The temp salary goes up about 17,000 for a summer hire, essentially six months. Uh, and we budget the, that something, something, something between 18 and 20, right? Right. Yeah, so that gives us a total department request for a part-time uh, hours of about twenty thousand dollars okay that's why and, full, the and then the full-time person uh full-time person was maintainer one the salary uh, was eighty seven thousand six hundred well that's not salary that's full up costs salary and benefits right and that's, salary that's, and benefits so it's salary is sixty thousand and the benefits are twenty seven six that's with a single right um that is for family oh okay so we could end up you always budget high yeah no no i yeah i know i'm trying you know, to and, trying and to that's what jeff told me to do is put it the that's highest fine. one in there you know eighty-seven thousand family all right um and then um amanda's position i think that was actually in your sheet too 
It is, but I didn't put it in the budget. So um, I'm changing to a 34 hour per week position would increase salary by 14,220 and benefits by 28,000. Healthcare, this includes healthcare, HSA and contribution, and MRF. Yeah. Okay. What is that salary rate at? Because I thought we were, I mean, we we're paying a little more because she was part time, I thought. Yeah. I don't know what her current salary rate. Let me pull up. Uh, let's see if I have that graph. Let me see. Administrative assistant hourly rate. Um, right now is 21.63. 19 hours per week is what I have here on the spreadsheet. All right. Yep. She's not actually out of the range then where she's at now. So um, do we have any idea what time Scott's going to hop on? He didn't say. Um, Anything else we have to address besides these, Eric? Uh, then you still have to make a decision. Do you budget for a uh, a planner, a part time planner, or not? I think we. Had, I thought we kind of agreed that that was the way to go, anyways. Given that we're 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 paying attorneys to to fill in some of the stuff right now, right? Well, so I had made that argument, but I don't know. I have not been at any kind of discussion where you've made any decision one way or the other. So if you have, it was without. Uh, All right. So, so what's your budgeting numbers for the planner? Town planner was, uh, you know, you mean Eric's number yeah. or the what, one I put in? What'd you put in? Um, five hours times $75 an hour. That was what I was told to add for a part-time planner and no benefits. I'm in the wrong business. It would be really tough to get a planner willing to do that. You might though. At 75 bucks an hour, I might go back to school and get my planning license. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's that come out to a year? Um, what is the the um, department number, Aaron? Good. Um, I'm just looking that up right now. Planner wages like seventeen grand, something like that. I got. Let's see. Town planner wages. The what I added was. Uh, $40 added, uh, $40 an hour times four hours per week times 52. So that's 8,320 is what I added. Okay. For the planner? Yeah. It says town planner, department 0803. I have here. If we're at 75, if we're at 75 an hour, it's going to be 19.5. Oh. Is that the going rate, Eric? Hmm. 75? Uh, I think you would struggle to get a town planner for that. I didn't realize you actually added it. I mean, you're not going to get one for 40 hours a week. I wouldn't even bother advertising it for that. Um, you know, most CEOs will make about that. For you um, mean $40 an hour, right? That's, well, that's that's, that's not even heard of, right? Yeah, no. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. Like the cheapest planner I know is Eric Trot in Coventry, and he makes right around a hundred thousand a year plus pennies right. um, as a full time employee. Um, you know, most town planners, you know, are 
you know, well over a hundred these days. Well, at 75, you're, you're, you're pushing um, one, you're pushing 150 if they were full time, 160 actually. Right. But you know, and if you're not paying benefits, right. I think you could pull off 75. I don't think you could pull off 40. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any objection to the planner? So it's probably like 15, six is what it's looking like. Paula. Yeah, I think when I gave you the information, I said you were looking in round numbers, you were looking at roughly 20,000 a year. I if think we were going to hire a part time plan. I think we may have confused adding more hours to the, I think, was it the ZEO or whatever we've got working? I think maybe that was where that number came from. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Combine the planner and the ZEO into yeah, one I think position. That was the, I think that was the issue. I mean, that's essentially what we have now. We just make the ZEO kind of take on the role of the town planner. But that's just one of those combinations that doesn't seem to work very well. No, I understand. Because it's a different set of skill sets. Paula, your take? Like you were saying, we're, we're spending a ton of money on this um, attorney. Well, we're, right? we're, not, we're, we're paying the attorney a lot more per hour. We're just not getting done what we need to get done, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I think if it's going to make that position efficient, we're going to get what we need, then that makes sense. Jeff Murray. I need to look into this a little bit more. So the reason we're asking about it is that every time they rewrite the, the zoning regulations, like for instance, they just rewrote them all for... Um, housing code and affordable housing and all that, we have to adjust our regulations accordingly within town. So we have to have someone actually go through and redo those. That's, that's really why this is that. And the fact that, you know, there's been a push from our, um, from our zoning, you know, our zoning chair, who's got a lot of stuff dumped on them, you know, and is a volunteer and certainly not um, versed in all of this you know, we can't ask a volunteer to be rewriting the regulations. So we've been using an attorney to do it. Right. And, and frankly, the town had a town planner up until around 10 years ago when Mr. Burbank got rid of the town planner in a co cost cutting uh, uh, venture. Yeah. Um, well, and, yeah. So, so we've, yeah. Been, we've been limping along with, so we've been getting, getting along with, somebody who was volunteering their time and an attorney doing this work? Is that what doing, you're telling Doing the regulations, yeah. Yeah, so in, in along the way um, for, there have been three projects that we ended up, I went back to the Board of Finance directly and requested supplemental appropriations because there were a bunch of things we had to do. Um, so one year we, got and spent around $12,000 outside the normal budget uh, on, you know, hiring a planner professional to accomplish some of our reg changes. Um, you know, in another year, I think we ended up spending an additional seven. So in that period, there have been times where we've gone back and specifically asked for pools of money to do certain things that you know, we're, we're really kind of time critical. Um, but I mean, the, a town planner really should be kind of integral in helping to develop the plan of conservation and development, number one, you know, and kind of overseeing the big picture, you know, development and, you know, how zoning goes in a town. That's yeah. really the, what a planner normally does. Um, we haven't had that, you know, in a bunch of years. I mean, so basically what happens is de facto, the, the chair of the planning zoning commission ends up functioning as the town planner. And then what we do is we lean on our town zoning attorney who in a prior life before he decided to go to law school was a town planner. Um, and we use Mark Brantz for a lot of planning advice. Um, you know, because of that. 
Um, and Mark is, is excellent. He's phenomenal because he brings both the legal aspects you know, and the municipal planning aspects together in one person, you know, but that advice comes at about 180 bucks an hour um, is what we pay when we talk to Mark. I'm just looking at the salaries. I just did some research and, it, and you know, it says average, sal I'm just confused because it says, you know, average salary for a town planner in Connecticut is 63,000. And yeah, no way. Well, that's what ZipRecruiter is reporting. And I'm looking at all the towns and cities and I'm just confused over the amount. That's all. I'm just trying to make sense of it. I mean, I could tell you about four or five years ago, I made a push to hire a town planner and I put together salary data for all the area towns and what they paid their planners. And at that time, uh, the there was literally like one guy in the area that was under 100K and that was Eric Trott in Coventry. And that was partially because he only had an undergrad degree. He didn't have a master's in, in community planning. Um, but generally speaking, those are pretty highly paid positions. I get it. I'm just looking at what the data is showing me. That's, that's all. I mean, if you would like, um, it would take me a day or so to do it. Um, I will give you the CCM salary data, current salary data. Um, you just tell me what towns you want to know, and I'll give you the data on, you know, what the salary basis is for all their town planners. Tell me what towns you want to know, and I'll provide that for you. Do we have any towns, you know, basically that in the past we've comped, like, you know, as, as comparables? Uh, like a list. So what I've done in the past is I've done neighboring towns for one, and then I've done towns of, of civil, similar size. There's a size grouping, I forget what, under um, basically two to 5K size range in the state. And I've gone for that for comparables. I mean, I don't have an issue with the position, but I just don't want this budget to re-release and have people Googling town planners and find what I found at 63,000 and say, why are you guys hiring somebody for a hundred thousand when? Well, um, it, the, the issue here is, and I, I, Eric, I know we go back and forth on this and I, I we always butt heads, but you can't comp off surrounding towns when they have development and they have, you know, and they have active, you know, water, sewer, all those things that play into, uh, you know, into plat into that area. So, you, you know, we need to go with like towns. If we start talking like, if you start looking at Eastford and Canterbury and things like that, that's, that's the town we're basing off of, you know, I mean, those are closer to what we are. Personally. Well, I mean, you know, then, then, so I guess what I would say is the town would be better off not having a planner than not having a good planner, um, you know, and mm, yeah. I mean, yeah. Look, we're, we're, I mean, we're never going to be a, a Hebron or, you know, or a Coventry. I mean, I'd love to say we are, but we're, you know. But remember, gonna... Coventry's and Hebron's are where they are because for many years they've pushed economic development, you know, and they've had functional town planning staffs, you know, dealing with things. You know, this is, this is a, a town planner is a long-term gain for a town. It's not a short-term gain. You know, in one year or two years, you're not gonna see a giant, you know, increase in anything in a town in a short period. You know, it's it's a question of where do you want to be in 20 years versus today? That's what a town planner brings you. I mean, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, Bill Warner, if you look at the transition, you know, in uh, Middletown. Um, 
you know, that Eric, was you, but you gave us that example before and, and, and I, and we, although I, I personally appreciate it, the different, I mean, I, I've seen it in Willimantic. You look at Willimantic 20 years ago, look at Mary today. I, I get it. I mean, the town planner makes all the difference in the world, but all of the towns that we are talking about have town resources that we don't, they have water, they have sewer, they have gas, you know? Sure. We don't have those. And so we're never going to be the target of some of those types of you know, retail establishments, unfortunately, that, that everyone would love to have. I mean, can we get some? Maybe, but you know, we're not exactly a big planning, a big planning town because of that. And we've universally as a town rejected those things. We never want to spend the money on those. So right. And, like, and that and that is why basically a town planner has always, you know, for the last 10 years. You know, we basically said, and we're not going to have a town plan, yep. you know, and, and I look at it and I say, you know, that's one of those things, either you fund it at a reasonable enough level that you get a decent product or you don't do it. And yep. I think it's perfectly acceptable to say you're not going to do it. I mean, you know, I argued well, so for that I, position for years and was told no. And I get that. So the question becomes, we know we've got a bunch of regulations that have to get caught up in some other things. What's it going to cost us to do that through the attorney position versus doing it through a planner? I mean, do we want to give a planner a shot for three or four years and see what it looks like? And, and is it a better, you know, address? Because we know we have a bunch of regulations that need to be addressed and, 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 and see how that plays out. Or do we want to say we're going to stay the status quo and, and not develop at all? You know, Jeff, what's your take? Oh, by the way, I talked to Scott. He is at least 40 minutes out. So I just want to get anything we add. I just want to get the data to back it up. Okay. So Eric, for the next meeting, can you get data from a couple of those smaller towns and see what they look like? You know, Eastford, Canterbury, something like that. Anything new we add, I guarantee you at the budget meeting, we're going to get the question. Right. Yeah, no question. And we Absolutely. need to have, make sure we have the data to back it up if it's in the budget. Say, look, this is what we're pay this is what we're offering the position at, right? And this is what other towns are paying. Well, let let's try to get some small towns on that and, and see what see what it looks like. Um. So, do we want to postpone that at this point, or is there anything else that we want to try to get information for for our next meeting? Because if we're not okay. going to make any motions, go no. ahead. No, I was just going to say. Oh, go ahead, Sherry. I, I just want a little bit of direction on this planner thing. Do you want me to just take it out for now? No, no, you, you have or up I it think... to, uh, excuse me. I just want to let me finish my thought because I'll forget. Um, or up it to uh, the $75 an hour, either four hours or five. I don't know. So why don't you up it for now to five hours? Yeah. And let's see what that looks like at the next meeting. And then Eric will come back with some data. And if it's drastically off or if we decide to go in a different direction, we'll adjust it. Okay. Thank okay. you. Can Thank you also, for the sake of the next meeting, can we put in what that other public works employee looks like the full time so that we're discussing that and Amanda just kind of throw everything in the pot and see what it looks like. Okay. Oh, you're not trying to do it on the fly. So that person is in the budget. That person, I was just going to say that person is in there. The full time? Full -time? Yeah, the budget that you have, that budget document that you have reflects both the part-time summer mm -hmm. helper and a full-time position at Public Works. So the only, thing it, the only thing it does not reflect then is- Is Amanda. Amanda's position in the planner at the higher rate. At Correct. the higher rate. Correct. Okay. So mm -hmm. can you adjust those so we can have like, what, what's a full boat look like? And then we'll start pulling out if we feel we it's appropriate. Okay, I can do that. That might be the easiest way. Everyone okay right. with that, Jeff? Yeah. Okay, and the deliverables you want me to send to the board is you want you want the basically the CCM salary data on you know comparable towns, what everybody's paying planners. Yes, I mean okay. just 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 for I was just kind of looking online just at, at LinkedIn and some job search sites, and I just found one for Hoppington, Rhode Island. And they're looking for a 40 hour weekly union position, 60 to 1000, 60 to 70,000 with benefits, 40 mm. hours a week. Yeah, but that's like a mob town. 
But what, no, what I'm saying is that's what they're paying for this position. <laughs> they're looking for somebody with at least five years of municipal planning experience. Unfortunately, that's Rhode Island, though. I don't, we don't know what, I don't know what the requirements are in Rhode Island. We don't know. I mean, Connecticut has, especially when you start talking, when you start talking building anything, I mean, all of the New England states are completely different. I mean, I get it. I get it. But that's that's in line with what the other salary data I was getting. So, okay. hey, you know what? Look, I'll pull your comparables. You can make a decision. Yeah. You know, maybe something's changed a lot in the last three or four are, years. Are you OK with us putting it in? And if we need to take it out, taking it out after Jeff? That's fine. I okay. think put it in. Let's let's see what it looks like. And then okay. we can subtract. And. Is there anything else of discussion that anyone wants to get more information on, whether it's a capital funds or any of the other things that are, you know, in the works? No, I think I think we're pretty. We have a good idea about Jay's position, the public works positions. I think we're in good shape, unless anybody else thinks otherwise. There's just a couple other things we were talking. There's there's a couple of things I've been discussing this week, and I don't know if we want to try to cover them with maintenance. But um, uh, we talked to Jay. We were talking about the the senior buses and treating the buses and that type of stuff. Do we want to try to add that into the senior budget or to have that stuff done, Eric? Or do we want to try to just get that out of maintenance next year? I think for next year we'll get that out of maintenance. I mean, the materials cost are pretty low. It's really the, it's really the labor, you know, of putting somebody under the buses, jacking the buses up, getting under them with a pressure washer, washing the shit out of them. Um, well, so I was just wondering if we're going to have somebody, if we're going to, well, if we don't have public works do it, if we have somebody else do it, what the cost would be. Uh, it's, it's way cheaper to have public works do it. Yeah, I, I don't have a feel for, because it's just, there aren't that many places that do it in this area. It's no. not commonly done on autos anymore, um, you know, at least in this area. And uh, honestly, so that, that is, that's a perfect, as they start to slow down and the weather starts to get colder, that's a perfect opportunity to start doing that, so. Yeah. I you mean, know. it's just, a, it all comes down to a question of time. I mean, you know, we're sitting there with with a kid in Zach, you know, that's a fully trained diesel and frame mechanic. I mean, you know, theoretically, if you ever went to, you know, one guy dedicated as a mechanic, you could probably take on the maintenance for senior transportation and a lot of other things. It's yeah. just that as soon as you do that, you take him out of all the other road work stuff that's yeah, also we're, involved we're, in his position. We're not we're not in a place to do that. So let's not even discuss it. You're going to scare people. Um, right. Yeah. All right. We will have opportunities though, where you have a guy out or somebody's going to be out on vacation. Yeah, And, and, and that whatnot. was sort of my, that was sort of my point. If we yeah. add another, especially if we add another person, it's the perfect opportunity to have somebody just sit underneath, you know, all the equipment one, one day and just spray everything in a day. You know, it, it takes give or take to do correctly it probably averages about an hour per vehicle. So it's kind of a one day project, I would think with most of our stuff, maybe maybe a little more than a day by the time you wash them down and stuff and let them dry. So, but if you prep, let's say you prep two at the end of each day, you know, and then the next day you, you spray them, you kind of just go like that. So, you know. Yep. I just want to stay, start taking care of our vehicles. I mean, it's, it makes it makes it makes sense. Okay. Uh, unless anyone objects, then I would actually make a motion. Oh, sorry. Public, public speak. Public speak, unless anyone wants to go on to other things, you know. No, I just want to remind everybody we moved our meeting from Monday to Tuesday. So. Okay. So should we be prepared to sew all this stuff up and, and make decisions on next Tuesday? And then I, that's yes, going to be our, our drop-dead date, correct? Honestly, I was kind of hoping we are going to do it tonight. I didn't realize Jeff wasn't going to be here and Scott wasn't going to be here, so. Yeah, I think it was just last minute confusion. So, yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, public comment, Diane Shokat. I'm good. Thanks. Victoria. Um, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you for being on, by the way. Thanks. Joanne. 
Hey, I am going to have to say something just real quick. Um, so as an outside observer, you know, I try to come to all these to get as much information as I can. Um, so as an outside observer, hopefully, and I think you guys probably do have a lot more information that you're privy to than what I'm hearing as you're making these important decisions. Um, you know, so I like what Adrian and all of you brought up at the end, just to have a little bit of backup. Um, you know, I'm totally neutral on everything, but I'm here to learn. I'm here to feel, you know, persuaded or, you know, get information for what, you know, decisions have to be made or whatever. It's all on you guys to present the budget, but um, it was kind of hard to just hear talk here and there when you're deciding raises. So I just think it's always helpful, like I say every year when you have a document because you guys ask questions like, oh, this is current salary. Start date was, you know, November 20th, 2020. You know, he's up and this is just general. Um, you know, and you're going to be making important decisions too about the administrative assistant position. So I would think there'd be like just a little feedback, you know, she's, and I'm just very neutral, but just hearing, you know, what's going to go forward. In the past, I have heard that communication is a big thing and clearly it is, and she's great at it. Um, but I would hope that if hours get added to that position, this is as a private resident and I do this as a job that she's really gonna help Eric so that Eric, and I know she will, um, that that position would really help that town because I feel like there's a lot of new employees that are gonna be coming on board that need to be managed. And, you know, there's just a ton of new employees in the last couple of years. So if, if that's gonna, you know, my job is the right hand man for my boss. So I just, you know, like to hear what it's going to entail, you know, what the duties are, what the new situation will be, but maybe that's not for me to hear. And you guys will just be like, that's behind the scenes. It's just helpful as an observer tuning into all these meetings to get the facts. And then I sometimes don't really feel like I have it all and maybe I'm not, I shouldn't. So that's just my thought. Thank you. Right. And Joanne, remember the, the board of finance still has essentially two and a half months to review the budget. The whole goal that could get it to you, you know, March 1 is you have all of March and all of April um, in the beginning of May to tweak before this goes to the public. So if there's specific information you want from us or the town, um, you know, give it to me in whatever form you can, email or writing, and we'll provide that to you. Um, I, I, think, I think her point, Eric, is that not, she knows his board of finance, she can go digging. Her point is that as a lay person who thinking I'm not, let's say I'm not on the board of finance, she's wondering if we're giving enough information to the public for them to understand why we're adding someone or what the duties are going to be. She knows she can go dig in from board of finance and ask for anything. I think she's talking as she sure. said, as, as a lay person. So as just an sure. outside observer. And I appreciate yeah. it's just, it's, it, I appreciate all of you. And that was just an observance I had today. You know, I, I think, I, I think you, to be Erica. candid, to be candid with you, you know, Joanne is that because there is so much to cover and because, you know, we're trying to cover so many lines, we don't always dig into some of this stuff because we, I think because we're interacting with Amanda, let's say from this position, for instance, I'm interacting with Amanda, Joanne's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Paul is interacting, Jeff, obviously Eric, we're seeing the workload that she currently has and we're wishing, you know, there are, I cannot tell you how many times that I looked at my watch and said, oh crap, it's two o'clock on a, on a Thursday and I've missed Amanda and I need something or I want something sent out or whatever, whatever. Um, because she's just not there to, you know, if I don't catch that two o'clock window, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck. So, um, totally, totally get it. I know how important she is to the town. I mean, every year I've made my points or whatever, or that position. I don't want to, you know, you're not supposed to speak directly, but no, yeah, Joanne, I think, I think it's a just real as a benefit. Courtesy. I just want to hear what it's going to do. You know, I yeah. think that would be helpful. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank All right. You. Anyone else? I think we're good. Motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Okay, so Sherry and I will get that info to you prior to the next meeting, probably in the next couple of days.